Hey, Nerdsing here, and welcome to this tutorial on audio editing, or specifically editing Girtan, which is Sikh devotional music. Now, for any of you who know me, I'm very passionate about this subject, and I've already covered some uh, videos with regards to recording audio, but now we're going to get started in this first video in what is most likely going to become a long series on the editing side of uh, recording and capturing Girtan. And in this video, we're going to specifically look at software and Adobe Audition. So this is the software that I use to edit. There are many uh, other softwares that you can use, uh, some free, some paid, but we're gonna focus on this one. And from there, we will get started with that software. We'll have a look at the interface, get um, familiar with it and take it from there. So let's get started. So as I said, there are many software uh, packages that you can use to edit audio. You know, you got Audacity, uh, Logic Pro, Sony Vegas, and Adobe Edition to name a few. I uh, learnt using Audacity first, which is uh, freeware, and then uh, when I started getting a bit more serious about uh, editing audio, then I found Audition and learnt it using lynda.com. So if you want a really comprehensive course on editing audio, then I'd suggest you go there. But in this series, uh, I'll hopefully give you the tools you need to get started in editing Keithin. So why Audition? I mean, it's a great piece of software. It's so easy to pick up. It's fast, it's packed with features. And because it's made by Adobe, then you can expect um, a high level of customer service, um, lots of updates with it so that it's, you know, staying uh, kind of on form and, and it's not that buggy at all. And uh, it works great with the other apps. So, you know, if you're getting into this kind of industry, um, then the way that you actually get the software is through the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. So when you get Audition, then you'll get everything else. Uh, so if you probably gonna audio edit, then you're gonna need something like Photoshop or Illustrator to create album artwork. If you then wanna get to, into video editing, then you might use Premiere Pro. Uh, that might lead into animating, that's After Effects. So you can see that the whole Adobe package, everything's there for you. So um, Audition's a really good software to learn. And if you do find yourself kind of coming into this industry and working in it then I would say Audition is very much an industry standard for audio editing so then that can work in your favour that uh, if you learn it then that might be a, a good tool to have. I would like to just point out though that if uh, in this video you'd like to follow along using some freeware or other software that you've purchased then that's totally fine you will definitely take something away from this video and in the future videos that I cover on this topic so don't be put off if you're not using Audition but if you're on the search for some software um, then I'd highly recommend it and then this video and this series will be perfect for you. If you haven't installed the software uh, already, then head over to Adobe uh, website, sign up for a Creative Cloud account. Uh, there are some great benefits if you're a student or in academia. Download the Adobe Creative Cloud app, whether it's on your PC or Mac, uh, then you can download Audition from there. So assuming that you've done that, open it up and let's get started. So what I'd like to do now is, uh, as you open it, you're going to see this default um, kind of interface that uh, as it comes. And I'm just gonna close a few windows and rearrange a few things to how I work. Of course, the more that you edit, uh, the more that you will tweak the, the windows you want open. And I'm teaching uh, editing Keithan on a very uh, basic and practical level, but there's so much more you can do with this software, which I won't show you in, in this specific tutorial. So we open up the software, it's gonna load, and on the top left, we have the project panel. So this is where our files go, we import them. There are different ways to import files. So one way to import files is to uh, double click in this box, or we can actually click and drag files into there. So as a project for this series, I'm going to, along with you, edit the 2017 uh, Manchester Samagam Geetham recordings. So I'm gonna upload these to Google Drive as a public link. I'll leave them uh, in the description. You can download them, or if you wish, um, you can use your own files. So I'm going to locate those files. I'm gonna double click in this empty area, locate to the desktop where the files are, and I have two zoom files there, four and five, and that's the, f that's the Friday evening recordings of this uh, Samagam. 
Okay, so my files are imported and just side note, these two Zoom files are actually from a H2N. So if you haven't already, check out my video on how to record with a H2N because all of the techniques in that video are the techniques that I applied in that Samagam. And so if you're using these files to edit and you listen to them, uh, you'll notice the, the sound quality of them just from the H2N. We did actually do a multi-track. We'll get onto that later on in this series. Um, but uh, that's the, the, the audio that you're listening to. So uh, just to clean up this interface a little, I'm going to close down the essential sound on the right hand side. So we just click on the um, three lines there and click on close panel. Same with the left hand side. We don't need the media browser, nor the markers, nor the properties. I'm going to click and drag history at the bottom there and move that up into the effect track area and I'm going to remove video because I'm not editing a video and then I'm going to open one panel so I'm going to do that by dragging up and going to window and then I'm going to click on metadata where you can use command P and that comes up on the right I'm just going to drag that across there onto the left now just a note there that if you are using PC uh, this might look a little bit different um, but it, sh it should uh, be similar Okay, so we rearranged our interface. Just before we have a look at the different panels uh, that we have open here, um, I want to talk about cache a little bit. Cache is uh, some temporary files that are created uh, alongside your edit. So as you make changes to your edit, you might be increasing gain, you might be adding filters, um, you might be working on the effects rack. All those things generate memory, uh, temporary memory. It's like cache, it's called. And you can choose where those files go. So uh, this is kind of a warning that as you're working with big Zoom wow files here on the H2N and it, and it gets even, uh, the files get bigger when you're working in multi-track, um, that, that cache uh, memory can uh, increase very quickly. Once you've saved your files out, you've exported them and you shut the software, those temporary files disappear. So if you're working from a computer that doesn't have much memory left in it, then you might want to direct the cache to a hard drive and plug that in. Uh, so we do that by going to the preferences. So on a Mac, we'll go up to Adobe Edition CC. On a PC, it would be edit, and then you click on preferences. And then we're gonna go down to media and disk cache. And from there, we can choose our primary temp and our secondary temp. So from there, you can choose your locations where you would like to have uh, your cache stored and uh, that I wanted to make you aware of so that uh, you don't have issues of the software actually running um, whilst we're editing. Cool, so we've got our interface looking how we want. Uh, you can save this out as a workspace if you wish. You can go up to the top there, click on the three bars, and then you can save that as a new workspace. I've done that, there you can see it says nerdsing, and then that comes up how I like everything to be laid out. And I've even gone as far as changing the color and, uh, of the waveform. You can actually do that by going to the preferences, clicking on appearance, and then you can change the colors of everything in your software because I am constantly looking at the software when I uh, audio edit then then you know you as you do that then you will want to kind of develop the, how it looks for yourself but just going through the different panels now uh, so from the project panel where we imported our audio if we double click on those files and then it opens it so now we're looking at uh, the fourth zoom file from this series okay so we have this file open and if I press spacebar then it will play and if I press spacebar again then it will pause and then I can actually click and drag this uh, scrubber to go through and on the right you can see the levels there and there are other ways to scrub as well so if you are on a Mac or you know a laptop that has kind of pinch to zoom then you can zoom in like that then you can use two fingers to scrub and you can see at the top there um, how much you zoomed in and then you can click from either side to actually zoom in and hone in if you're looking at a specific area or even drag that section across the screen to find uh, the audio that you're looking for. So for some of you that are completely new to editing Keithan, what we have here is two waveforms, one at the top, and this is the left-hand side, and we have one waveform at the bottom here, which is the right-hand side. So this is showing that it's a stereo file. It's, uh, it has two separate channels uh, picking up different things. And so those are two separate waveforms, and uh, 
across the x-axis you could say that's time uh, which we just talked about scrubbing through and then on the y-axis we have decibels so that's a measure of sound and if we actually uh, scroll using your scroll wheel um, on the decibel area then you can actually change the scale to see um, the waveforms on your software how you prefer. So to finish off this video, I'd just like to show you a few more um, features of the software, show you where it is, what they're called, and then uh, in the next video, we'll get started with the editing. So at the bottom here, we have the gain control. So uh, we can I click on this and choose a number, and that's affecting the number of decibels we want to increase the audio by, and that can be for a selection or for the whole thing. Um, on the left hand side here we have the history so every single thing that we can do uh, it actually creates a historical reference for that so if we actually want to jump backwards in time for all the things we've done uh, in order then we could do that uh, we have metadata here so that's id3 tagging so that when we export um, our files with specific mp3s of each Geetani, each artist, then for example on your phone or in your car, then they would appear, artist is this person, the title is this Shabbat, this uh, song, uh, this album, this event is from this time, it's from this year. You, on the comments you could have some kind of website, it could be a call to action, and, uh, and then a, a finally a track number so that if people are downloading a number of files from this same album, then the, in a playlist on their phone or in the car, they will appear in, in the correct order, in the chronological time or however you choose to uh, organize that playlist. So that's how we actually affect um, that file. It's called ID3 tagging. We can do that in this metadata and that's what we opened earlier. So the next feature that I would like to show you about Adobe Edition is the effects rack. This is awesome, one of my favorites. Um, what the effects rack allows you to do is rack a number of effects and listen to them, how they affect the audio without actually applying the effect. So let me explain this in a bit more detail, that this is um, essentially a way of doing non-destructive editing. If we were to one by one go to the effects um, table and then we apply gain, then we apply graphic equalizer, then we increase the bass, then we put some reverb in, we might end up having some audio there that is so far away from the original but we don't know which effect it was that we applied that took us so far away from it so what the rack allows you to do is add in all these effects but you're not actually applying them you're just hearing them they're just like you could say listed filters and then you can tweak uh, you can you know have an on and off switch okay is it this does this sound good does this not sound good it does sound good but I only want 50% of that effect applied so then you can add this um, dry wet mix into the equation and then when you're completely happy with all of your effects applied then you can press the go button the apply button it will then apply all those effects to your audio at which point then you could export your um, mastered audio as an mp3 so that's a huge um, huge positive about addition that it has this feature so in this audio file uh, it's over three hours uh, so what we want to do is isolate each Geetani and easy way to do that is with marking so a quick tip there is uh, we will listen for when the beginning of the Geet and the music starts and then we'll just press M and that creates a marker and then towards the end we'll find where it ends and then we'll press M again marking is great because then we can see that this is the uh, one Geetani's track and then we can uh, select that and if snapping is on we can make sure that's on by going to edit snapping and yes that's ticked then it's very easy then to actually select that um, that Geetani and then we can copy that into a new file and then that will be that file that we work on uh, for that Geetani. So if I just select between these two markers uh, let's say that's the uh, Geetan for one Geetani and I right click on that selection and click on copy to new that's going to copy that selection into a new file I'll double click on that and the next feature I want to show you is fade in fade out so at the top left we can see uh, this box here and if I click and drag it away from the corner then I can actually have a fade in and then if I move whilst still uh, clicking on it if I move the mouse down or upwards then I can actually change the nature of that fade in so that's where we fade in 
and then if I go to the end of that track then I can do a fade out in a very similar way by dragging left away from the corner and then if I drag down or drag up then I can change the nature of the way um, that we have the fade out there. So the finally the last feature that I would like to show you is spectral frequency analysis. I know it sounds very fancy but this is basically another way that we can work uh, towards reducing Shenny. So if I just click it up here you can see the icon there it's, you can also uh, access it by pressing shift D so what this data is showing us is instead of uh, decibels on the y-axis we have Hertz which is frequency so Shane are very high frequency right so we can actually use spectral frequency analysis and we can isolate the very top frequencies that only Shane would be heard on and we can remove them. So that's another way uh, where you can remove Shane and we'll be dealing with that as probably a specific video just on its own. So that was a tour of the interface of Adobe Edition and in the next video we'll go through a tutorial of how to do a basic edit of Geetham. But just to take a step back and talk a little bit about why I'm making these videos in the first place and it comes from a few places really. Uh, one is that when I was learning uh, recording, editing, that kind of thing, I had to spend a lot of time and money uh, on courses and trying to figure a lot of stuff out. And we have so much expertise within our bunt that um, hopefully with Guruji's Girba, nothing can happen without that, that I can share the little that I know um, on this platform of YouTube that um, the people that are passionate about this uh, or want to learn, they can. And, but also in an attempt to open up this platform that amongst the bunth we can actually come together, uh, those people who know about this kind of stuff, share knowledge so that we can up our game and increase the quality of our Gidhan worldwide. Secondly, in an attempt to help change the culture of how we record. So we've got this culture at the moment of like, just record it on your phone, just get it out there. But if we can actually uh, teach to show it's not that difficult to edit, show what you need to invest in, how to do it, then uh, hopefully that can increase the quality of Geetan that we listen to today uh, so that we can take uh, Laha from that. You know, there's so much Geetan coming out from all corners of the world. Imagine uh, with a bit of teamwork and sharing knowledge, we could up that quality, but also create a kajana, create a resource uh, together uh, for the future generations. Well, that, that, that would be amazing. But really snowballing off of that, um, something that something quite close to my heart is thinking about the future, the future generations, uh, that if we can up our game, it's, it's very easy and it's completely possible for us to capture and record Geeth into a high quality. We, we don't really have an excuse uh, in terms of technology available. Um, the future generations can enjoy high quality Geetan from our generation that's not only high quality but it's well tagged, it's well documented, it's easy to find. Um, and so that's that's why I'm making this course, that's my humble attempt at it. So I hope you enjoy these videos and I really appreciate your comment guys. So this series, this uh, training course is for you. So if there's anything I'm missing or anything you want me to include or any comments you have, then you can leave a, a comment in, uh, in the video below or um, if you have any issues with installing Edition, then you can hit me up on Instagram too. No problem on that side. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe subscribe so that you can keep in touch with uh, when the next videos are coming out and I'll catch you in the next one. Nerd Sing out.